and welcome to the CU Insight Network podcast. My name is Lauren Culp. I'm the publisher and CEO at CUinsight.com. And it's my job on this show to have conversations with the thought leaders who support the credit union community. We get to identify those issues that affect credit unions and talk about the best practices out there so that we can all learn from one another and improve our credit unions. My guest on today's show is Craig Helmers. He's the Vice President of ATM Management at ATM USA. Craig, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Happy to be speaking with you. Yeah, I always start off the show the same way. Most of us did not grow up thinking we'd get to work with credit unions. And uh, I did not even know what they were until I was in college. I'm curious, what did you want to be growing up? Well, like most kids, I dreamed of being in the ATM business from an early age. (laughs) <laughs> what, what kid doesn't, right? Um, exactly. But, you know, kid, kidding, of course. My younger version envisioned pitching for the New York Mets. I was, I guess, the 1986 team. I was around 11 or 12 years old. And Keith Hernandez, Gary Carter, Good and Strawberry, that World Series team, they, they caught my imagination. And I've been a diehard fan ever since. Unfortunately, recently. Well, I love the story. <laughs> Sorry about the team. <laughs> now, so you're not in sports right now as a profession, but what was the journey like to your current role then as vice president of ATM management at ATM USA? Well, I've I've worked at ATM USA for 14 years and I started on the retail side of the business, mostly dealing with convenience store chains, restaurants, bars, that type of thing. It was a good way to familiarize myself with the business in general. But as I got more experience, they transferred me over, let me spread my wings a little bit, and now working with financial institutions and have been for uh, roughly 10 years or so. My focus is is on the credit union side. I do work a little bit with banks, but credit unions are, are more of my focus. And I just like this side of the business more because it's less transactional and more about being a good partner and solving problems for our clients. It's been a really good journey so far. Well, you're speaking our language. We love we love credit unions over here. So <laughs> tell me a little bit more about ATM USA. What is the elevator pitch that you would give folks about what you do at ATM USA and where you can really add value for credit unions? Well, we really pride ourselves on providing high-end service with exceptional, exceptional uptime for our partners. Our our goal is to take the stress of operating an ATM fleet off the internal staff of the credit union. And we know that resources right now are limited in today's world, have been ever since COVID, and for whatever reason, it hasn't fully corrected yet. So hiring our company is like adding a fully functioning ATM department with a 25-year track record of high-end results without the overhead that comes with running an ATM fleet yourself. I love it. That is a perfect elevator pitch. And I don't work at a credit union now. I did back in the day, but I hear from a lot of my friends who do still work at credit unions that the ATMs that they have at the credit union directly, there can be a lot of challenges related to maybe regulatory mandate changes, systems upgrades every few years, a lot of having to replace or upgrade the ATMs. I I remember it being a bit of a headache when I was at the credit union. Is that the case? Is that your experience across the board? And maybe can you tell us, have there been any later, later changes in federal mandates or any other regulatory mandates? Yeah, it does seem that every few years, something new comes around that has to be dealt with. Past examples that come to mind uh, would be EMV, Americans with Disability Acts, and the Windows 10 updates. Those were all fun to deal with, right? Uh, Nobody enjoyed that. But as technology evolves, so does the sophistication of criminals that want to steal money out of the ATMs. So the next big one that needs to be on everybody's radar is the PCI compliance piece. PCI Security Standards Council is mandating that all ATMs and ITMs have the latest, most secure pin pad and software on their machines. And the deadline is the end of 2024. So we're about a year and a half out on that. Any ATMs or ITMs that uh, are not upgraded will not work as of January 1st, 2025. Processor will just turn off. Wow. Well, that sounds like a really urgent issue. Uh, Obviously, we don't, you know, with all the investment in ATMs, don't really want them to just turn off. (laughs) What do you recommend credit unions do to prepare for the impact here? It is an urgent issue. I've seen several reports that up to 50% of ATMs run by banks and credit unions in the U.S. will need to be replaced due to this requirement. 
So the very first thing I would do if I was a credit union is find out whether their ATMs need to be upgraded. It could be software only. It could be parts and software. It could be the whole ATM. Um, there are a lot of popular ATMs, such as the NCR 30 series, Diebold Optiva series, that don't have an upgrade path at all, which means those ATMs will need to be replaced. Once they have an idea of what does or does not need to be replaced, then they could devise a plan of attack. That makes a lot of sense. You know, as a credit union, we've kind of touched on this, but it can be really expensive to sort of maintain and upgrade and replace ATMs constantly. So I'm curious, do you have any suggestions for them on how they can maybe manage or defray some of the costs associated with ATM management? Yeah, I do think that ATM outsourcing needs to be considered or at least looked at by almost every credit union. ATM outsourcing is designed for credit unions that want to get out of the ATM business altogether, but still offer their members convenient, well-run ATMs and ITMs. So, you know, for for credit unions that that choose ATM outsourcing, they get to turn the responsibility for upgrading the ATMs over to their ATM partner. That would include parts, software, or even entire ATM replacement. Yeah, great solution. It is. Um, it, It also takes a lot of pressure off their staff. They no longer have to forecast and order cash, load cash, or any of the other uh, tedious, time-consuming things associated with operating ATMs. So it frees up the accounting department, and it also protects employees if you're still having them load cash at off-premise or island ATMs. Possibly the the biggest benefit that I could think of is that you, you get to call one vendor that does it all. So credit union staff doesn't have to call around to figure out which vendor might be responsible for whatever issue an ATM is having. They simply call or send an email and it, it gets handled. And because ATMs that are under this type of uh, outsourcing platform are closely monitored, the odds are by the time that that call or that email is placed, there's already a tech that's been dispatched to go out and fix that ATM. So, and and to go a little bit further with that, you know, there are situations where the credit union may want to maintain ownership of the ATMs themselves, but they like the idea of outsourcing. So there, there's basically a managed services program that we have for that, very similar to the full outsourcing model, but the credit union maintains ownership of the equipment. And in most cases, you know, there are flexible, customizable solutions that can be designed specifically for the credit union. It's certainly not one size fits all. It's great to hear about all of the different options that exist for credit unions. And I think, you know, exploring a a trusted industry partner is probably a great way to go for many of them. You mentioned off-premise ATMs, and I want to talk about that a little bit. I know you recently published a blog on placing ATMs in credit union seg locations. And so I'm curious, can you explain more about how that works and how a credit union can really implement it and maybe what's the cost associated? Sure. Uh, and, and I love talking about SEGs because I, I think they're very underutilized. Um, for most of the SEG locations, your credit union has a clear advantage over competing financial institutions. You, you kind of have an in there already. So you need to take advantage of those warm relationships. And the marketing that can be done on those ATMs can lead to new members. When it, when it comes to ATMs, our experience is that SEG locations are both strategic and relationship driven. So you want to, you want your brand in front of as, as many existing members as possible, as well as people who are most likely to become members. And that certainly exists at those seg locations. We're all looking for ways to, to maintain and grow membership, right? So law, low cost off premise ATMs are a great way to stay in front of members and potential members without blowing out the budget and without creating more work for the staff. Plus, It helps build relationships with local businesses by allowing them to offer a perk that will help them attract and keep staff. So in my opinion, you want to make it as convenient as possible for people to do business with you. Surcharge-free ATMs that they walk by all day long is one way of doing just that. People spend as much time at work or more time at work than they do pretty much anywhere else, including at home. So your credit union should have a presence in the workplace and take advantage of these niche locations where you're not constantly battling other financial institutions in your local market. Yeah, that's such a good point. And I think exploring putting off-premise ATMs into different seg locations, it just makes so much sense uh, for credit unions, especially those that are really seg-based. 
And as we look to the future, you know, you've shared so many great pieces of information here. We know that there are kind of ongoing changes in terms of regulatory mandates and system upgrades that we need to have. Um, but I'm curious, what is ATM USA's overall focus for the road ahead? Where are you really focusing your energy? It's a couple of things. Our focus going forward is is providing you know turnkey outsourcing solutions for credit unions and banks that we want to become more efficient when it comes to their ATM fleet. We see a tremendous need. And we want to be that solution for them. It's actually been a focus for us for years now. Uh, another focus is bringing new products and technology to our partners. We have a new product called Mini Branch, which I think is a game changer. It's a powerful marketing tool that offers video and teller capabilities, texting and chat features, a translator with 100 plus languages, and so much more. Mini Branch is affordable for most any financial institution, and you don't need ITMs or integration for many branch to work. Amazing. Great to hear about some of the solutions that are out there for credit unions. And uh, uh, definitely, it seems like ATM USA is a, a partner that folks could want to learn more about when I explore doing business with. Well, as we wrap up the show, Craig, I always like to have some fun with rapid fire questions, let our listeners get to know you better. The questions are rapid, but we say your answers don't have to be. So if you are ready, I will dive into uh, this next section. All right. Who is someone in your life that was a great leader and what makes them great? Great leader. When I think of great leaders, I think of Washington, Lincoln, Eisenhower, unbelievable people that were put here at a specific time in history that changed the world for the better. But there are only so many of those types of people out there. And it's it's hard to strive to be one of those guys. On a more personal level, you know, something that would be a little bit more relatable to an average guy like me would be uh, I've got a former high school classmate and her dad, he started uh, his career climbing telephone poles in the Northeast. And by the time he retired, he was the CEO of Verizon. I think about what his work ethic must have been like, showing up every day, working hard, regardless of his role at the time, earning the respect of his coworkers and the executives as he climbed that corporate ladder. Those are the types of great stories I try to share with my kids to try to inspire them. You know, hard work still works. I love it. That is a great story. All right. If you're going to splurge on something, you want to treat yourself, what is something that you might invest a bit of money in? Um, if if you ask my wife what I splurge on, the answer would be my truck <laughs> and maybe shoes. I, I do like a good pair of shoes. I love it. All right. Well, random question for you. Say you're going to travel for work. What's the city that you're most excited to visit or excited to see on the agenda, whether it's a client visit or going to a conference? There are so many great cities in this country. I recently visited New Orleans for ATM IA conference, and I had a great time down there. So that's one that that jumps to mind. Great food, great music. I was in Austin not too long ago, and I don't get to Texas as often as I'd like. Uh, I had the best steak I ever ate in my life on that trip. (laughs) <laughs> so restaurant was Jay Carver's. If anyone's in Austin, you should certainly check it out. Awesome. I love that. Austin is definitely a fun town. All right. What's a book you think everyone should read? A book everyone should read. The easy answer to that one for me is, is the Bible. So many applicable lessons for everyday life. But if we're leaving religion and politics out of it, I would say something like The Wealthy Barber. My older brother gave that book to me when I was still in high school. So I'm dating myself. This goes back 30 years. But credit unions like to educate their members. And that book taught me principles like paying yourself first and dollar cost averaging. You know, how many kids today come out of high school that know these principles? You know, how many of them know about budgeting or the difference between expected returns on equities and bonds and cash investments? We could solve so many problems in this country by teaching the basics of budgeting, investing, and general personal finance. And that's one reason I like dealing with with credit unions is because they have a big focus on on education. So The Wealthy Barber, it's an oldie but a goodie. All right. We're going to link to that book here in the show notes so that everybody can uh, read a little bit more there. What has been your best hack for creating balance and integration between your work life and what I like to call your life life? I don't know if it's a life hack, but you definitely have to make time to enjoy life at home with the wife and kids. That is why we work in the first place, right? To support your family, be a good good role model, all of it. So I put the phone and laptop away at dinner time. If we're away on vacation, I typically carve out just an hour or two, maybe one in the morning 
one in the afternoon to to check on things at work. It it comes with the territory if you're in sales. You you always have to kind of keep your finger on the pulse, so to speak. But having a good support team back at the office helps a lot when it comes to being able to separate work and play. Awesome. I love that. Well, we're going to link to everything we talked about today in the show notes. My last question for you, though, Craig, is do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share or final asks of our listeners today? I think my biggest question for credit union executives is whether or not their ATM fleet is being run with overall growth and efficiency in mind. Are you actively marketing your best products on your ATMs? Are you fully leveraging your relationships with your SEGs? Can you save time and money by outsourcing management of the ATM fleet? With PCI mandates right around the corner, now might be a good time to look into it. Well, what a perfect way to wrap up the conversation today. Thank you so much, Craig, for being on the show, taking the time. It's great getting to chat with you. I hope you stay well. And thanks to all of our listeners today for tuning in to the CU Insight Network podcast. We will be back again next time.